Hi there. <clears throat> Do you agree with me that first impressions matter a lot? You know, first impressions matter a lot in any situation. It could be your interview for a job. First, in, uh, first impression could matter the first time you met your, you know, the partner, your future partner. The first time, you know, you met someone who became a good business partner or a friend. First few minutes matter a lot. Today, I'm going to decode in brief how the first impressions matter in the MSBC clinicals very briefly. Try to give you an overview, which I've noticed over the years. And I hope it's useful for you. So I'll share my screen. I'm Dr. Pavitra Chakravarti, by the way. I'm the... I've been teaching uh, MRCPCH with Dr. Academia, my uh, our coaching session with my colleagues, esteemed colleagues for the last 10 years. And this is one of the years, which is what we have noticed, which you need a few points, which you need to know. Really. So let me share my screen. Right, so hopefully you can see this. The first time you're seeing impression, they must be just first, and we're talking about MSWH clinical specifically. So, first thing when you're, whether it's MSWH clinical, you know, where it could be a, you're standing, think, imagine yourself, you're standing in front, outside your room, okay? So, just let me just get this here. So, think about the first time. Uh, one second, let me sort this out. Okay, so first time you're standing in front of the room, whether it could be a history taking session, it could be a communication station, it could be a video station, it could be a developmental station. Or you're standing very nervous outside the room. The first station is probably your, maybe it's history taking or it be communication. And you will notice you've got a paper and pencil there and you've got the task, you know, the sheet of paper, which has got the task written out for you. So, how does your mind go through? You have to stay very calm. And what do you do during that period? All right. So, <clears throat> first thing I would say is note down the name, age, and details of the task. So it seems so very obvious, but so many people seem to lose this. You know, so many people seem to lose this. Make sure you get the name right, the age right, and when you enter the room. First thing to impress is obviously telling the right name and double check the age and you're started. You know, and as you know, if you start, if you start well, the rest of the things will flow easily. So that's the first thing I would say you need to do. Now the next thing would be check what is the task given. Now it would seem so obvious, isn't it? That what's there to say about this. But believe me, over the so many years that we've been doing, I've seen so many students appearing for the exams. You, it could be a situation like maybe a, a child with cerebral palsy and you've got a situation where a history taking, where the history taking is specific about, you know, whether the, how special emphasis maybe has to be given about the child's growth prior problems recently, or maybe the problems he's having with his development or problems he's having with his care, something or the mother's concern. Now it is easy to get into it and get overwhelmed and think that, oh, they want everything and have a very generalized idea in your head. Calm yourself down, go through exactly what is specific because you've only got a limited time, maybe 20 minutes. So in that limited time, the exam is designed to focus you on a particular task which has been given to you. As I said, specifically find out what that task is. Is it to find out further information about the nutrition? Stay status of the child which the mother is worried about? Or is the task specific about the convulsions that the child is having? Or if it's a clinical situation, it's a lower limb or upper limb, you know, you have to be very specific. So, and this is where so many people get wrong. And over the years, you know, which I've seen, it's very sad. You know, I've seen doctors who are DM, MD, very smart students. And, you know, in the, hot, in the heat of the situation, unless you're used to this, uh, they miss the simple information or they're rushing in the, in the beginning and you've lost it. 
Okay, so that's another thing. Now let's come to when you enter the room. Obviously, again, this is something which is very obvious. Established rapport with the child and the parent. This is a UK exam, and compared to Indian exam, it is a lot depends on how you behave. You're being marked for your behavior, how you're interacting with the parents, how you're interacting with the child, and. Even if you're not sure about the diagnosis, if you're not sure about what's going on or, or what exactly is, uh, you know, how to move on from there, what are about the, uh, the clinical findings, you're not sure how to approach it, doesn't matter. Even the, you are being marked separately for the first few minutes, all right? And the first few minutes, irrespective of what the problem could be, you are being marked for, number one, how you approach the child, whether you're hand-washing or not, whether you're going for the right name. So there are marks for that. And why would you lose that? Okay. So that's the first thing I would say. After you've done that, make eye contact. And if the situation demands, you know, go give a good smile. You know, what's the problem in giving a good smile? So do that. Obviously, as a situation demands, is obviously a situation where it's a case of breaking bad news. I would not do that. I would be, you know, not smile that prominently. But I think that's obvious. After that, address the parent and the child with the right name. Okay. Address the parent and the child with the right name. And I can't overemphasize that so many times in a rush, we spell the parent's name wrong or we get the sex wrong of the child. You know, sometimes sex, you may not be sure with the dress and get the sex wrong of the, and that is a very disrespectful for the parent, for the child. Because when you very often small children, you can't really make out by the dress whether there is a boy or a child or a girl. So you need to specifically be sure what the sex of the child is and double check with the parent what he or she would like to be addressed as. Like simple, uh, is it okay if I address you as Mr. Brown or Mr. Mukherjee? Or how would you like me to address you if you're not sure? Okay. The second thing would obviously be hand wash with some case of clinical examination, uh, short clinicals or development station. I think you know this uh, better than me. All right. So overall, in case of bad, obviously breaking bad news, how would you do that? In case of bad news, breaking bad news, check how much the parent is updated. Because very often, if you if it's a bad news and you are, uh, you're not, sorry, uh, you should know how much the parent does he have some idea that the, the child has got some bad down here that year and from there you can take it from there okay so i am asking which is in the clinicals i'm going to say the clinical station as such it is to do with clinical examination i think first thing is obviously the plotting on the growth chart this is very often, it's a very obvious thing, but it's amazing how many of us miss that. We think of bigger things, but start with the basics, okay? Now, this is where I've made a lot of mistake, you know, especially in the clinical situation. Have a look around, see, you know, make sure, as I said, the checklist, see whether you are, whether the child, whether there is a, you know, if it's a cerebral palsy child or a, neuro, or a neurology case, whether there's a splint lying around, even if it's a cerebral palsy child, or if it's in a rheumatological condition, there could be splints, which could be lying around. So make sure there are, if there are special shoes lying around, it could be just underneath the bed. If it's a respiratory condition, there could be peak flow meter around, you know, just by the side of the bed, or make sure if, there, if you are missing any oxygen saturation monitors which are lying there. I, I remember in my exam, I think it was the DCH exam, where I went to see the child, I could see that the child was a civil palsy child, and I looked and I and I thought I'd seen the splints and I, I was very confident and I moved on with that. But you know, <laughs> later on I found I had missed something and the examiner kept asking. And believe me, I turned around and there was a wheelchair. It was kept behind me, you know, the, by the side or by the side of the chair. So I don't know if it's a trick or not. Normally they don't try to trick you, but you really need to have a good 360 degree view and see what's kept on the side of the bed and on the table beside, underneath the bed or maybe on the sides and make sure that you have no, not missed anything. Hope this was helpful. Uh, just a small summary of, you know, what I feel over the years. You just have to have a very quick idea. I know it seems very obvious to many of you, but for those who are starting, 
try to get your heads around this and uh, just mention for the, uh, if there's anything else you would think needs to be added to this or if there's any points i've missed i would be grateful for that and uh, in future if there's any particular points you'd like to cover you would like me to cover on videos i've decided to do regular videos on general observation about small points points which are helpful for the exams which are commonly missed and if there's anything you'd like me to do in particular please write uh, you know in the comment section and i will try to follow you, and i'll try to do that and obviously uh, press on the subscription but on the subscription you know tab so that uh, i can keep doing regular videos to update you and to inform you especially those who are new on the ms which is journey uh, small tips and hints which will hopefully help you in the exam thank you that's it for today okay <laughs>